After Exile hit the Turbo Graphics in 1992, Telenet in Japan worked on a sequel, technically the third in the series, called Exile Wicked Phenomenon. Shortly after it reached North America, localized by good old working designs on Super CD-ROM. I remember purchasing this new, admiring the really cool outer sleeve shrink-wrapped around the case, much to the chagrin of completest collectors today. We begin with an animated sequence showcasing all the main characters as well as some excellent music. Once again, this Exile sequel is very strong in the music department. We are then thrust into the title screen, where we can select beginning or continue. Just like in the previous game, you can save progress at various points to return at a later date. Once again, we play as Saddler and begin in the village of Ass Assy. Yes! I was hoping so. Just like before, Exile Wicked Phenomenon has two play styles, the overhead view and the side-scrolling action view. Overhead view generally consists of villages or towns kicking things off in ass assy. Here you move in four directions, exploring the area, buying items, and talking to characters. I must say, this one has a slightly less polished feel here than before. For example, there are no character faces popping up during conversations, losing some of the personality. And honestly, unless they reside in a large building, they have nothing useful to say at all. But don't worry, you can talk to some of the trees. The overhead areas were simple before, but they had more mini puzzle-like missions and variety. Not so much this time. Things instead will happen like you'll be given a key for use on the next screen. Okay. Once again, the overhead areas include various shops with proprietors who don't tell you much about the items you're purchasing. Keep the manual handy and make sure the item you're buying is the next step up from where you were. You can also buy health refills, increase in offensive and defensive power, and more. Navigating menus here is pretty straightforward. In fact, the menus overall are simple and easy to use with a basic peek at weapons, tonic, status, and obviously, saving your progress. The game switches to side-scrolling action earlier than before. The platforming aspects are simple, but the locations are quite varied. Use sword swipe with button 2, jump around with button 1, and downward slash using a combination. These action screens have gorgeous color and detail, and some even exhibit multi-scrolling backgrounds. The overhead areas look good as well, but are a bit boring and samey as you get farther into the game. Now, here is where things get interesting. Unlike Exile, that was very simple and balanced all the way through, Wicked Phenomenon's enemies are quite overpowered right away. I was so excited as a kid to play the sequel to a game I enjoyed and was quite confident. <laughs> Imagine my shock when I died many times on just the first screen. This enemy unbalance is apparently a known issue with the American version of the game. Victor Ireland, the president of Working Designs, has gone on record saying that, quote, we added like plus one to the monsters and made the monsters exponentially harder rather than incrementally. Whoops. I never could get far in this game, and I'm so glad there was something actually contributing to it. Anyway, characters will join the quest like before, although Saddler is the only one actually seen overhead. However, you can now select these characters to control during action screens. They each have unique attacks and abilities, as well as weapons slash armor, but share experience and gold. This is a great mechanic, but honestly, Rumi is the only one worth selecting at times due to her long-range projectile and speed. Inching forward slowly and attacking from a distance is tedious as hell, but a major key to success. Luckily, swapping characters around during gameplay is a breeze. In fact, all of the controls are quite solid, really, for as limited as some of them are. 
although I'm not a fan of how far to the right and left you need to be to scroll the screen. Ugh. I only found one use for Kindy. And Fakil? Yeah, just tell him to stay home. For a few minutes, you'll also be able to select Lawrence, who is powerful with a killer axe attack. But he disappears just as quickly as he arrives. Bummer. In shops, only the character you have selected can buy particular weapons and armor. Funny enough, I had so much gold from leveling up, there was plenty to go around. I leveled up about as far as my sanity would allow. I mean, look at that next level up. Interestingly, when you do level up, it's very subtle with a quiet audio cue and health replenishment. If you blink, you'll miss it. <laughs> Another less polished item. Oh yeah, and you can also find items in various chests scattered around. <laughs> Open. Open. Open! As you play, the game will get more and more difficult, but somewhat unfairly so, as you'll never truly match in level. Luckily, health is automatically refilled in overhead areas. So the side-scrolling stages are more like conduits connecting them. Strategize the best way to get to the overhead areas fast and save. The game does have a lot of positives. Swapping characters is fun at times. The action RPG mix is still solid. The game looks pretty darn good. The music is great. The cutscenes are well done. And overall, things are quite speedy. Well, except for the sluggishness in killing off some more powerful enemies. Oh, good lord. But sadly, as mentioned, there are a lot of unpolished aspects and a horrible unbalance. I also have to say the hit detection is inconsistent and weird. So use it to your advantage. Your hit detection is weird too. <laughs> what the? Look, it does nothing at all. Maybe it just tickles, I don't know. Because of the weird hit detection, I cannot stress how important pattern recognition is, especially on late and powerful bosses, though it is very satisfying to defeat them. Toss in bizarre tonic mixing screwing you over at times, less charm than in other working designs entries, and a storyline not as interesting as before, and you have a lot of potential that sadly wasn't quite met. Some would say, buy the PC Engine version for a more balanced and somewhat easier adventure. Hmm, perhaps. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Tower of Lost Souls and beyond. This is where young Chris gave up every time. It's literally one try through a handful of stages, no overhead areas, no health refills. Well, not this time, damn it. A little distance here. Little trial and error. Ha! Open. <laughs> Open! Some shots go right through enemies. That's, that's, that's okay. Patience. F you, Tonic. All right, it's final boss time. Boom! Yes! Yeah! <sighs> On one hand, Exile Wicked Phenomenon exhibits many wonderful aspects, some that were present in the previous game and some which are new. On the other hand, it lacks balance, variety, polish, and is quite glitchy. It is beatable, but you may not have the patience to make it through to the end without a patch or the import version, and I can't say that I blame you. I had some sick agenda here that I'm not sure was healthy. I wish I could recommend this one. As a fan of the previous, it pains me to say that I can't. And that wraps up our last visit to Ass Assy. <laughs> I'll miss saying that.